Iska was an ugly lonely loser, who was an overpowered saint disciple wielding the astral sword, and fights for an empire that has killed its entire population. One year ago, he rescued a witch who was imprisoned by the empire, and got his rank stripped after being imprisoned for his treason. However, the god of the world offered to free him, under the condition that he eliminates the ice calamity witch. And after receiving back his astral swords, he demands three members, Nene, Jin, and Miss Miss, that he needs in his unit. The group has done a lot of witch suppression missions in the past, but this time, it is different as the witch is purebred, and has managed to defeat entire armies all by herself. The next day, the group goes to a forest near the reactor, and have to jump out of their car as they got suddenly attacked by the mages. Jin gets attacked by a fire spell from a mage, but Iska intervenes and cuts through the flames using his astral swords. He then shoots the astral mage, but the bullet is blocked by their wind magic, and a bunch of other mages spawn from underground. But Iska and Jin expected this ambush to happen, and asks Nei Nei to help, who launches anti-astral power flares to create a distraction. Using the chaos, Iska deals with the mages on the right, and tells Jin to take care of the left. He moves towards the mage that was casting a huge fireball, and leaps into the air to dodge the attack, and takes out the mage. A witch who is standing nearby, tries to counterattack, but Iska takes care of her before she can use her magic. After all the mages are down, another enemy appears with a golem, and attacks the squad. Iska cuts the golem's right arm, and tells his squad to leave and let him take care of the enemy alone. He continues to dodge the attacks, and gets the best of her, making the woman think he might be a saint disciple. Iska knocks her out of the golem and holds his sword at her neck, but Rin rips her dress, and tosses it towards Iska to blind him so she can defeat him in a close-ranged combat. Iska manages to dodge her attack and pins her to the ground, but the Ice Calamity Witch, Alice, appears to rescue Rin and freezes the whole area. Rin warns Alice that Iska's astral sword can break through the astral art, but she tells her not to worry as she did a good job installing Iska while she froze up the whole reactor and destroyed it. Realizing that the reactor is destroyed, Iska chases after Alice, and she summons a thousand ice swords, and launches it towards Iska. He tries to dodge and defend himself, but gets grazed in multiple locations, and does a similar attack himself with the astral sword's power to counter hers. Alice wants Iska to give up, but he can't afford to, because he wants to stop this meaningless war. Hearing this causes Alice to get surprised, and she retreats to a higher location. Alice doesn't want to stop fighting until she defeats the Empire and unites the world. As she talks about ushering in an era of peace, the ice underneath her feet breaks and she falls, but Iska catches her out of reflex. She panics seeing herself in a man's arms, and summons a huge f***ing albatross to go away from the forest. But before she leaves, she wants Iska to know that he won't get lucky the next time they meet. The rest of the squad arrives, and sees the effects caused by the astral art of Alice, and thinks that she is truly extraordinary. At her home, Alice ponders the words of Iska wanting to stop this war, and wants to go to an opera house in the neutral city to distract herself. Watching the emotional performance makes Alice shed crocodile tears, and Iska, who is sitting behind her, gives her a handkerchief so she can wipe out her tears. However, they were unaware of each other as it was dark, but suddenly, the lights turned back on as the performance was over, and they were shocked to see each other. The night before he went to the opera house, Iska had trouble sleeping and had a sad look on his face. Miss Miss tries to be there for him as a captain and a friend, and wants him to share stuff with her. To help him, she takes Iska for a change in scenery, and takes him to her room, but she forgot to put her private stuff away, and got embarrassed about it. Sitting for a cup of tea, Miss Miss gives Iska a ticket to a romantic theater that happens every year in the neutral city, and orders him as a captain to go there the next morning. While he was sleeping, he receives a dream about his master giving him the astral swords, and telling him never to let go of them as they are the only hope to restore this broken world. After Alice realizes that she just received a handkerchief from Iska, she aggressively blames him for following her, and almost starts a fight. But Rin tells her to stop since they are in the neutral city. They go outside the opera house to forget about what happened, and have the meal they planned to take in an Italian restaurant. But they didn't reserve their table, and have to share it with someone. While they were sitting at the table, Iska arrived at their table since he had made a reservation there, as it was the closest restaurant to the opera house. Even though they are uncomfortable, they eventually decide to put away their differences and eat together. Alice and Iska's taste in pasta ended up being exactly the same, and they ordered the same things. After eating the delicious pasta, Alice goes back to her home, and is told by Rin to keep this event to herself as Iska is still an enemy of her country. 
The next day, Iska and his squad trained by carrying huge backpacks around their backs under the order of their supervisor, Rissia. She will be giving out the command to the group, and is happy to see that the squad is still somewhat active and strong as they were before. Rissia knows that Iska is having trouble sleeping, and gives him a ticket to an art exhibition. Meanwhile, Alice visits her mother Lore to discuss her battle with Iska. Lore was worried about Iska's abilities as his power were on par with the Saint Disciple who were the most elite soldiers of the Empire, and tells the story of their nation's founder and her younger twin sister to Alice. One hundred years ago, the founder battled with thousands of soldiers alone, and still lives. Her sister was the one that started the royal bloodline and is the ancestor of the purebred, but the Empire didn't know that she had a twin sister, and rejoiced in their victory when Nebulize passed away. However, the binding on the Founder has started to weaken since Alice fought with Iska in the forest. The next day, Iska and Alice meet each other again, but Alice decides not to go with Iska, and wanders around the neutral city alone, only to get lost. After he had spent some time in the art museum, Iska tries to find Alice as he thinks that she might have gotten lost. Alice accidentally spills out that she is a princess, and they can't go to the museum together since they are enemies. But Iska thinks that art has no boundaries, and they eventually end up going together. After they were done examining the art, Alice gets some ale for Iska to thank him for showing her the way to the museum. After emptying the bottle, Iska falls asleep, and rests his head on Alice, and realizes she could do anything to him in this state. Iska brings some ale for his whole squad while they are together for a meeting, and Rissia addresses the squad, telling them to come over to the Imperial Senate. At his meeting with the eight apostles, Iska feels that he has failed since he couldn't protect the reactor, but the mission he was given was to stop Alice. Since he did his job perfectly, his chance of becoming a saint disciple again has increased, and he was given a new mission to apprehend the ice calamity which Iska doesn't want to do that, and skips his training with the squad as he needs to go to the neutral city, because he feels that Alice would also arrive there. However, Miss Miss doesn't want him to go alone, and agrees under the condition that she will go with him. In the morning, Rin has a dossier about Iska, and tells Alice that he was one of the most talented swordsmen for the Empire. But after he was promoted, he never set foot on the battlefield and was imprisoned because he freed an astral mage from her imprisonment. Hearing this, Alice wants Rin to find out about the astral mage he had freed, but it will take Rin a few days. Lu thinks that her daughter is taking too much interest in the Imperial Swordsman, and reminds her of the atrocities the Empire has committed against the astral mages. After her mother goes away, Alice orders Rin to take her to the neutral city tomorrow as she wants to confirm things with Iska herself. On his way to the neutral city with Miss Miss, they witness the huge f***ing albatross in the sky yet again. When they meet, Alice feels like they have a connection with each other and introduces herself to Miss Miss. They go outside of the city, and Alice asks Iska's reason about freeing the astral mage. Iska did that because she was only 13 years old with weak astral powers, but the Empire apprehended all the mages despite their age and power, and Iska disagrees with it. He wants a peace negotiation to happen between the kingdoms, and wants this stupid ass war to end. However, Alice feels glad to know that someone like Iska lives in the Empire and wants him to serve under her. Hearing this, Rin panics and says that her mother would never accept something like this, but Alice will take care of it somehow. Before Iska could give his reply, the founder popped out of nowhere and raised the whole ground with explosive magic. They barely managed to pull themselves out of harm's way. Iska wonders why she is attacking Alice as she was supposed to be her ally, but the people of Nebulize just call her the founder because she founded their nation. Both him and Alice try to stop the founder, but she blames Alice for joining with the Empire, and launches a deadly fire attack that destroys the ground around the vicinity, but Alice is saved by Rin, who gets in front of her and takes the attack head on. Alice cools down Rin's body with her ice magic, and Iska tells Miss Miss to take her to a hospital and tell people to evacuate the area. After Miss Miss takes Rin away, the Founders looks at Iska's sword and think maybe they were the reason she awoke from her slumber. The swords belonged to Crosswhale, who was Iska's master, but even though he possessed them, Iska wouldn't be able to defeat the Founder according to her. Iska and Alice chase after the Founder who launches a fire dragon towards Iska, but he slices through it using his astral swords while Alice summons ice pillars to cancel out her other attacks. Seeing an astral mage and an imperial swordsman working together, the founder gets angry, and starts to use both ice and earth magic as well. She turns out to be too strong for the two of them to handle, and summons a huge storm that almost swept them away. Since they are in the neutral city, Iska wants Alice to put away their differences aside as they both have the same end goal. 
and they move together towards the founder to defeat her. Iska starts to chase after her while dodging her attacks, and Alice makes a stair of ice so he can get close to the founder. Combining their powers, the two defend themselves against her attacks, and Iska manages to defeat the founder by cutting off her wings. After the fight is over, Iska refuses to join Alice, but proposes a temporary truce for now as he is tired as f after fighting the founder. After his battle with the founder, Iska goes to a casino with his squad, and almost wins the jackpot, but the slot machines decides to reject him at the last moment just like my crush did. Two weeks ago, Rissia approached Miss Miss and told her that she would be working under her orders from the next mission, and their training will start next month, so they should enjoy the little free time they have. At the casino, the group is worried about what their mission might be as it will stay a surprise until the next week. Iska wonders what they are doing in a casino, and Miss Miss tells him that she plans to win a jackpot, and buy the latest battle tank for her squad, so if the mission turns out to be bad, they can safely bail from it. Meanwhile, Rin takes Alice to the same casino even though she doesn't like gambling, and would prefer to be in the neutral city instead. Rin thinks that she still wants to meet with Iska, but she reminds Rin that her intentions are pure, and she would fight Iska the next time she sees him. While Iska and Miss Miss are gambling, Alice and Rin pass right by them, and go to the slot machines. Instead of gambling, Alice wants to think of a perfect date for the battle between her and Iska, and wonders what days would work for him. She treats their battle too much like a date, and Rin reminds her that she is planning to fight Iska, and not planning a marriage with him. Alice then uses the slot machine and hits the jackpot on the first try. As the coins keep on dropping and dropping, Rin leaves to get the staff, and people gather around Alice as they are surprised to see her win the jackpot. Nene also happens to be there, and thinks that if they had this many coins, she would be able to buy the tank her captain wants. Hearing this, Alice gives a bucket full of coins to Nene as she has no use for them. While Miss Miss was lying on the ground out of despair of losing all her money, Nene arrives like a guardian angel, and reveals that a person who won the jackpot decided to share her earnings with her. Iska thinks that she must be a very generous person, and Miss Miss thinks that she is probably a Saudi oil tycoon. But Nene tells them she had blonde hair, and was elegant like a princess. Hearing this description, the thoughts of Alice circled around Iska's head, but he just brushed it off. After winning the jackpot and giving it to Nene, Alice goes to a fortune teller, and tells her about the boy that is one year younger than her that she wants to meet. The fortune teller flips two fortune cards, and tells Alice that the person she is waiting for is always close by, and they are connected by a strong connection that even fate can't break. After she gets her fortune told, she moves away from the building just before Iska and his squads reach there. Iska wants to go to the fortune teller, and receives the same revelation Alice did. Meanwhile, Rissa meets with the eight apostles to discuss a vortex that appeared nearby. While the squad were sitting together, Rissia explains to them about what a vortex is. When the war started decades ago, a drift of astral energy was created that was called the Vortex, and it gave the powers to the Grand Witch Nebulize. The Empire can't afford to let them get their hands on this vortex, as it might birth another witch as strong as the Founder. Meanwhile, Rin explains to Alice that her sister, Sisbel, messaged her about a vortex that has appeared in the southwest of their nation at the Mudor Canyon and the Empire has sent troops towards the location. Alice wasn't made aware of this, and they blame the Zoa family for delaying the report. They think that the Zoa family want the Vortex for themselves, as the Vortex is created at the location which they administer. So Alice and Rin visit the acting head of the Zoa family, Lord Mask, who sneaks on them with a dagger in his hands. Rub tells Mask that he got close enough, and he appraises her sense of surroundings. Alice is confused by this action, but Mask tells them that his astral power has always been weak, so he carries this weapon out of fear. They ask Mask about the Vortex, who tells them that this might not be a Vortex, but he has still sent troops over just in case, and the report got late because it took him a while to prepare the documents. The next day, Iska and his squad go to the rendezvous point, and they stumble upon Miss Miss's friend Nora. She introduces herself to the squad, and says that she has been friends with Miss Miss since they were children. All the troops are then told to line up by the commander of the operation, Nameless who tells them to look for the Vortex before the Sovereignty, or destroy it if they fail to do so. Lastly, he suggests everyone not to get in his way as he intends to destroy the Astral Mages by himself, and doesn't want anyone to interrupt him. The team then searches for the Vortex, but they can't find anything useful. While they are inside the cave, Noro informs Miss Miss that a unit went near while they were searching for the Vortex, and they lost communication with two other units who were sent to look for them. 
When all the troops regroup at the base, Nameless orders everyone to continue their work and doesn't issue an order to rescue the missing soldier. Iska was disgusted by this and wants to question Nameless about his decision, thinking that he would listen to him as he was a saint disciple just like Nameless. But he ignores Iska as he doesn't have the rank anymore to make these demands. So Miss Miss decides to use her authority as a captain and asks Nameless to issue an order to rescue the soldiers. Even after the pleading from Miss Miss, Nameless acted like he doesn't have a mouth as well, and doesn't say a single word to both of them. Having learned about the Vortex, Alice plans with Rin to go there as she can't let the Zoa family do as they wish with it. Alice visited the Vortex where the Astral Mages are stunned out, and was told that the location is off-limits but she kept on going until she reached the vortex. Thinking that some trouble has occurred, Mask arrived there as well along with kissing, but feels assured that it was only Alice and Rin. Even though she met her as a child, kissing doesn't know her relative Alice and hides behind Mask who wants to defend the vortex by himself. Alice doesn't doubt the power of kissing, but wondered if she was strong enough to go up against the Imperial Army alone but she has powers that could even surpass Alice's in the future. Surveying the signal coming from the Vortex, Miss Miss and her squad went to investigate it, and learned that the Astral Mages had infiltrated one of their bases. Considering the possibility that they had kidnapped the missing soldiers, Jin wonders what their next step should be, when suddenly their eyes divert to a translucent light coming from the Vortex in a valley nearby. Being the first unit to discover the Vortex's exact location, Nene thinks that the headquarters will surely give them recognition, but the astral mages have already reached the vortex. Another group arrived at their location soon after, and it is revealed to be Noro and her unit, so Miss Miss immediately gives a horny hug to her, but Noro is even hornier than her and practices BDSM. However, their fun time ended shortly, as Noro and her squad are revealed to be astral mages. She squeezed Miss Miss's neck, and surges lightning through her body, but Nameless hates the sight of traitors, and immediately eliminated her squad. With his eyes set on Noro next, her subordinate conjured a huge blast to allow Noro to escape, but Nameless ended his life in a flash, and threw a dagger toward Noro who was trying to get to her car. As the knife could hurt Miss Miss, Iska parried the knife, and allowed Noro to escape with Miss Miss, but Jin managed to put a tracker on her car before she left. Thinking that Iska just lost his mind, Nameless asked if he wanted to go back to prison, but the squad couldn't let their clumsy captain get hurt, and wanted to safely rescue her. Nameless agreed to their demands, but told them that he would bomb the whole enemy base once he returns to his camp, as the Vortex has fallen into the hands of the enemy. Standing in front of the Vortex, Alice felt that it was small, and could only benefit a few astral mages until its energy gets depleted. Having escaped from Nameless, Noro arrived there as well with Miss Miss, and Alice immediately recognized her from their meeting at the neutral city. But before Miss Miss could say anything, Rin gave her a good old smack in the head, and knocked her out. Realizing that Iska was nearby, Alice feels like she had hit a jackpot as she can fight with Iska again, and immediately goes in search of him with Rin. Iska and the rest continued to lurk around the Vortex's location, but decided to push the rescue as the first missile was already fired from their base and the next one could also hit in 20 minutes. With so little time left, the group rushed to the vortex and rescued Miss Miss who was being subjected to Noro's weird fetishes. Refusing to go down with the fight, Noro attacked Iska with lightning, but he effortlessly deflected all of her attacks with the black astral sword. Before he could knock her out, Kissing revealed her presence muttering some goofy words, and immediately puts Iska on guard as she was a strong purebred mage. Arriving at the Imperial Army location, Alice and Rin tried to search for Iska, but he was nowhere to be seen. However, they were met with an unlikely enemy, who attacked Alice from the shadows, but Rin blocked the attack, and received a cut on her arm. Meanwhile, Kissing attacked Iska with her thorns that she can turn into any shape she desires, but Iska surprised her with his strength and blocked all of her attacks. Able to regenerate objects that she catches with her thorns, Kissing used a missile that she had captured earlier and exploded it on Iska. With his presence discovered, Nameless deactivated the invisibility of his suit and chases after the two, but Alice was able to block his attack and rains ice swords on him. Dodging all the swords elegantly, Nameless returned the favor and threw her sword back at her, but it only grazed her neck as Rin stepped in at the last second, and deflected it. Alice apologized to Nameless for not showing her true power, and covers the whole f***ing base with ice, making Nameless leave the location. With him gone, they decided to go back to their base, but saw a huge explosion caused by the missile that Kissing exploded. 
thinking that Iska died. Kissing announced that the mission was completed, but the Giga Chad Iska managed to counter the explosion and came out unscathed. Being in awe of his power, the maniac Kissing decides to transform her thorns into a dragon. But Iska dodged all of her attacks and knocks her out by hitting her guts with the hilt of his sword. As he was about to carry Kissing back to his house, Mask cowardly stabbed him in the back and threw Miss Miss into the vortex. Not giving a single about his life, Iska jumped into the vortex to save that clumsy woman. In order to fight with Iska again, Alice jumped into the vortex as well and tries to save them. But it's too late, and they were separated because of an explosion of light. Back on the surface, Iska and Miss Miss were discovered by their comrades, but they have no idea how they managed to save their asses from that big explosion. Reminiscing about her encounter with Iska, Alice was lost in thoughts, and gets startled by Rin when she comes near her. To make her forget Iska, Rin wants to arrange a battle between them, and plan to go to the neutral city as Iska arrives there occasionally as well. But the cunning had some ulterior motives in her mind. Being a dead weight for her team, Miss Miss begins apologizing to everyone to compensate for her mistakes, especially to Iska. However, Iska doesn't have any grudges against her and wants her to lift up her head. When suddenly Miss Miss feels a weird sensation in her shoulder. Nene wants to help her satisfy all her sensations. Sorry I mean she wants to look at her shoulder. But before she could, Rissia arrives in their room and announces the secret mission she was talking about which is to capture Queen Nebulize. Jin felt like she was joking as the mission was close to impossible. But Rissia has an ace up her sleeve that would allow them to enter the Nebulize sovereignty. Standing under the blistering sun, Alice and Rin had been waiting for Iska to come to the neutral city. But his absence had made Alice worry. The survival chance of a non-magician after falling into the vortex is relatively low, but Alice believed that he was still alive. Back in their room, Miss Miss's shoulder was still making her feel uneasy, but she brushed it off and said that it's probably a bug bite. However, Nene is always horny and made her take off her jacket, but the thing they saw wasn't a bug bite. Realizing that the weird sensation was coming from an astral crest that she obtained after falling into the vortex, Miss Miss panicked and tried to play it off, but Iska calmed her down. Jin thinks that the explosive light they saw came from the astral spirit that resided in the vortex, and even though the chance of getting possessed by it is less than 1%, Miss Miss somehow checked all the requirements, and got the astral crest. She could go to the research institute to get her checked, but since she is a witch, she could get thrown into prison or even worse, be executed. As she was on her knees hopeless, Iska tells her that the end decision should be hers, as if she turns herself in she would be imprisoned, and they might allow her to live outside the empire under surveillance. However, she could choose the second option, and hide the astral fact. She doesn't want to drag others with her if she happens to get caught, but her squad told her to not worry about that, and that they would do their best to help her. After Iska goes to his room, Jin and Nene also arrive there, and they discuss Miss Miss's situation as they need to hide the fact that she is a witch now. With Rissia being a saint disciple as well, it would be difficult to hide the crest, and she would be executed if her astral crest is discovered as the recent events with Noro have put the Empire on guard for spies. Afterward, Iska took Miss Miss to the neutral city to ease her mind, and sat together with her on a bench. Iska wondered what the world was like before the Empire discovered the secrets of the celestial body that had astral spirits in it and gave the people their powers. In fear of the unknown magical powers, the Empire got into a war with the mages, and the situation has been the same till present, but Iska wants to find a way to stop this stupid war. Hearing this sob story, Miss Miss couldn't help but cry, and goes to get something to drink, but while she is gone, Alice stumbles upon Iska sitting on a bench. After a brief argument about not wanting to sit together, they eventually put aside their differences and channel their inner philosophers as they talk about different aspects of life. Iska had been worried about a roadblock in his life in the form of the astral crest on Miss Miss, and Alice wants her to reveal the thoughts that were troubling him. But she wasn't good at keeping secrets so he refuses to tell her anything. As she was looking at him lewdly, Rin arrived at their location and gave a bottle of juice to both of them. Without a single f Iska chugs the drink and falls asleep on the bench. Rin had put a sleep-inducing powder into the drink, but she never imagined him to drink it carelessly, as she expected him to figure out that the drink was poisoned, and it would make him hate the sovereignty. Being left with no choice but to take him into custody, Rin picks up his body, but Miss Miss stumbles upon them doing the heinous act. Enraged by this act, surges of magical energy started to leak from her crest, 
and she chased after the kidnappers. But Alice stops her right in her tracks with her ice magic. When Rissia learned of this event, she informed the Emperor that the successor of the Astral Swords had been kidnapped, and asked what their next move should be. Rin wanted to take Iska to the central province of Nebulae's sovereignty, but Alice was against that, as only torture and death would be waiting for him there, so she ordered Rin to take them to the nearest Nebulae's territory instead. Wanting to take advantage of Iska's kidnapping, Rissia suggested the eight apostles to infiltrate the province of Alcatraz where Alice and Rin were taking Iska to. However, her real intentions were to rescue a mage named Solinger that went against the former Queen Nebulae's and is being held in a top security prison in Alcatraz. With her meeting done, she went to Miss Miss's squad to give them temporary astral crests for a week through a device, and allowed them to rescue Iska. Knowing that Miss Miss already has a real crest engraved on her shoulder, Jin takes the device from Rissia, and mimics the process on her, so Rissia wouldn't suspect anything. On their way to the hotel, Iska wakes up, and expressed his disappointment towards her. Having the crest engraved on their bodies, Miss Miss and her unit enter the Nebulae's territory without a problem. Reaching the hotel, Rin wanted to chain up Iska in a holding cell, but Alice doesn't want any rumors to spread about how poorly she treated her prisoner. Rin was against that idea, as Iska could be dangerous even if his hands were tied, but eventually agreed to her demands after she insisted. With Miss Miss and her squad entering Alcatraz, Rissier revealed that this province holds prisoners from within the country, and was paid heavily from authorities outside the sovereignty to hold their prisoners as well. Leading the group to an alleyway, she meets up with the squad, and told them that Iska was being held in the Olalugan prisoner tower. After Alice left the room, Rin picked a knife, and cut her hand to make it seem like Iska tried to attack her so she could use this story to kill Iska and tell Alice that it was in self-defense. She started to swing the knife at him, but he barely managed to dodge her attacks. Not knowing what to order, Alice went back to the room to ask Rin about what she wanted for dinner, but she saw her holding the knife on Iska's throat, while he was barely holding back the knife. After Alice scolded Rin for her actions, she tied a chain between herself and Iska to keep an eye on him. But Iska doesn't like that idea, as he doesn't know what to do if one of them wanted to use the bathroom or go to bed. Hearing this, Alice realized that she didn't think this through, and tied the chain to Rin instead as she had to go to the bathroom. While she was taking a bath, Iska questioned what they wanted to do with him, and Rin answered that if it were up to him, she would lock him away forever. While they were in the middle of the conversation, Alice comes out with only a towel around her body, as she wanted to make his dick rise like Burj Khalifa but panics because she didn't realize how embarrassing it would be, and turned away from him. As Iska got a look at the astral crest on her back, she wanted to ask about what he thinks of it along with her bouncy plot. For Iska, meaningless things like the crest don't matter to him, as his only goal is to stop the war, and fight Alice like her rival. Hearing that he considers her his rival, Alice lets go of her towel, and exposed her plot, as all she wanted in a boy was that he wouldn't give her special treatment. As she exposed herself to Iska, Alice lost all sorts of common sense, and wanted Iska to take off his clothes so she could take a look at his juicy sausage. Having infiltrated the Olalugan prison tower, Rissia managed to somehow reach Solinger's cell who was imprisoned here for the last 30 years, but she didn't expect him to still look this young and hot. Learning about the Empire's plan of a large-scale invasion, and to capture the current Nebulae's queen, Solinger agreed to assist Rissia as he was tired of living in a cell. Unable to sleep, Iska gazes at the peaceful night view, and was joined by Alice. The province of Alcatraz was famous for holding the strongest of criminals, but the scariest prisoner it contains was Solinger, who got the nickname of a demon for turning on his own nation. As their conversation was going on, Rin informed Alice that the Empire has infiltrated all their provinces except the central province and crossed the border. She suspected that Iska had some hand in all this, but the poor soul was locked in the hotel room all this time while this was going on. With Solinger being freed from his imprisonment, a red alarm started to beep around the prison tower, and Miss Miss's squad struggled to understand what was going on. She thought that Rissia must be in trouble, and receives a call from her, so she took advantage of the convenient timing to ask about Iska's whereabouts. But Rissia told her that Iska wasn't there, and a demon was rampaging around the prison tower, so they should escape and not get caught by the guards. Having received their orders, the group thinks of a way out, but found themselves trapped in there amongst an army of guards. In her hotel room, Alice saw a huge explosion at the Olalugan prison tower and was told by Rin that Solinger had escaped the facility. Knowing that the emergency response team wouldn't be able to hold back Solinger, and he would probably go after her mother's astral spirit, Alice was left with no choice, 
and had to take care of the problem herself. Before she left the hotel, she wanted to ask Iska's help for something, but she couldn't find the strength to muster the words. So she just left a handkerchief as a thanks in exchange of the one that he gave to her, and insisted that he take it. At the Alalugan prison tower, Miss Miss decided to act as bait, and posed as a witch that just escaped her cell to make the guards run after her. Running from the guard, she got trapped in a flurry of bullets shot by the guards, but luckily, Jin stepped in at the right time, and eliminated the guards. Wondering what the f was going on, Isker received a call from Miss Miss, and informed that Alice was headed their way. Jin wanted him to escape from the hotel and find them, but there was no way for him to get rid of the handcuffs. Suddenly, he remembered the handkerchief left by Alice and checked it out only to see the key to his handcuffs inside it. Calling himself a dumb for not realizing her actions, Iska freed himself while Alice and Rin made their way to the prison tower. Alice quenched the flames in the blink of an eye and took the guards of the prison tower under her control. Since they don't have any time, Alice ordered Rin to go to Solinger's location as the emergency response team wouldn't be able to handle him alone. Having freed himself from the handcuffs, Iska met with the rest of his squad to take back his swords, and told everyone to wait at the big hotel behind them while he went towards the prison tower. Amidst the smoldering flames and sparks rising from the ashes, Rin found Solinger sitting on top of a huge rock, and immediately turned on her battle mode. Even though she looked like a maid, Solinger could tell that she knew how to fight, and she immediately threw a bunch of kunai at him, but they were blocked by his wind shield magic. With a head on attack not working as well, she summoned a golem through her earth magic, and ordered it to crush his annoying face into a pulp. But a mere golem was too fragile for Solinger, and he turned it to smithereens with a single attack. Using the leftover stones from the golem, Rin launched them all towards Solinger, and covered his body with stone. But the big baddie pulled out a Uno reverse card and countered with the same attack. Her magic was nothing in front of him, and Rin was left bloody and battered from his attack. Mustering up the strength, she chased after Solinger again, but got hit by an invisible blast and fell on the ground. As he was about to finish her off with another invisible blast, Iska arrived as a guardian angel and surprised Solinger by slashing his blast. Rin was dumbfounded about why Iska would risk his life fighting a wretched demon like Solinger but he hoped to have himself and his friends be left alone until they exited the sovereignty border if he defeated the demon. Solinger couldn't wrap his mind around why an imperial soldier was fighting for an astral mage, but nevertheless, he vowed to crush him and launched an invisible blast that he blocked once again. He wondered how Iska was able to slice the blast as it was invisible, but the movements of the flames around him allowed him to detect the blast using his heightened senses. Rin wanted Iska to know that he captures astral spirits, but he shuts her face and eats her out the floor as she was ruining his fun time. Obliging to request of having a fun time, Iska dodged his attacks and moved in with a sword to his face at lightning speed, but his wind barrier blocked it. Vowing not to fail his next strike, he moves towards Solinger who just exploded the area around him to keep Iska at bay. Meanwhile, Alice ordered the guards to search for Solinger while she puts out the fires that had erupted again, but Nameless jumps out of nowhere in an attempt to stop her. She launched multiple ice attacks on him, but he dodged them and took his leave as his mission was already completed. After Nameless decided to flee, Alice's attention is diverted to Solinger and Iska who were standing on top of a high building. Using the process of yin and yang, Solinger combined two different elements and launched a freezing fire towards Iska. With his black astral sword, Iska tried to cut the blast, but the blaze just grew stronger and engulfed Iska. Thinking that Iska had died by that blast, Solinger found it hard to believe that Iska won against the founder, but Rin was sure that Iska would soon show up again. As he was about to shut Rin off for good, Iska made his appearance yet again and chased Solinger to the stratosphere. Combining lightning and wind, Solinger launched a deadly lightning storm, but Rin's earth magic contained its effects, and Alice arrived at the scene as well. Iska chased after Solinger and managed to break his magic swords with his astral swords. Happy that fate has brought him a formidable opponent, Solinger promised to come after his ass another time, and deliberately fell off the roof into a deep hole. With Solinger gone, all the prisoners at the Alalugan prison tower were accounted for and the Imperial forces had also left the Sovereignty. By keeping his promise to Alice, Iska had earned the right to leave the Sovereignty with no retaliation, landing back on the Empire's soil. It was revealed that the Nameless that fought Alice was Rissia wearing a replica of the original Nameless's suit, and they both go to the Eight Apostles to report that Solinger had successfully been freed. 
reminiscing about the memories she had made with Iska, she involuntarily whispers his name. But Rin didn't want her to utter the name of the enemy with no care. However, she had started to acknowledge Iska a bit as he saved her life, and drove Solinger away. Listening to their conversations with her astral spirit, Alice's sister Sisbel found out that she was an acquaintance of an imperial soldier named Iska, and begged to the stars to let her see the blessed face of Iska once more as she was the mage that Iska rescued all that time ago. After explaining the mission to the eight apostles, Nameless and Rissia visited the emperor who appeared to be aware of the fact that something was going on between Alice and Iska. At her bedchamber, Sisbel received a terrifying premonition in the form of a dream that showed herself running after her mother before she died. She was summoned by her mother afterward, who wanted her to visit the independent nation of Alsamira as it was rumored that they were fostering a relationship with the empire under the radar. Thinking that she would require guards for this mission, Queen Nebulize offered to have her take as many guards as she liked. But she only wanted to take her butler Shuval, says she doesn't trust anyone else. In her palace, Alice was tired of completing the work that had piled up for weeks, and takes a tea break with Rin. Going out of her room, Alice encountered Sisbel, and asked her if she was going to see their elder sister Elatir, who just arrived at the palace after a long time, but Sisbel just ignored her like she wasn't even there. Even though her behavior was rude, Alice understood her sister regardless, as the whole commotion about who would be the next queen made her want to leave the palace as well. Ordered by Queen Nebulize to go to Alsamira, Sisbel got into a car with her butler to complete her mission, while Elatir meets up with Lord Mask at the Zoa family palace. Elatir believed that someone close to them was involved with the empire behind the scenes, and it could shake the sovereignty to its core. Meanwhile, Iska and his friends also visited the independent nation of Alsamira for their vacation, and the girls immediately wanted to get into the ocean. Coming onto the beach with their swimsuits on, the girls wanted to know who was showing off their assets, but Iska is a man of culture, and had no problems with threesomes. After swimming and drinking until the evening, Miss Miss was too drunk to even walk, so Jin carried the clumsy woman at his back and was told by Iska to take Captain to her bed while he and Nene would buy some dinner from the supermarket. Having drunk a lot of juice, Nene rushed to the bathroom. While she was away, Sisbel ran into Iska, and they both seemed to have recognized each other. But Nene broke up their humble reunion and Sisbel fled from the spot. She made the poor old butler run around the city for her, but she didn't care about it, and felt happy that she was reunited with the night of her dreams. Exhausted by her work, Alice laid dead on a sofa, and felt miserable as she had to attend a meeting at 5 a.m. tomorrow, when suddenly Queen Nebulize knocked at her door, and told Alice to come with her. At night, Sisbel was searching the area where she met Iska, and used her astral spirits to find out where they were resting. Queen Nebulize took Alice and Rin to Sisbel's room as she was worried about the things she does in the walls of her room, since she basically stays there for most of the time, and this was a good opportunity for her to find out. Following the memories of Iska and Nene, Sisbel and her butler reached the hotel where Iska was staying. Since he wasn't staying at the hotel that was affiliated with the Empire, Sisbel felt assured that he wasn't on a secret mission, and sneaked into his room, but Iska immediately put her on the ground, thinking that she was an assassin. Meanwhile, Alice searched Sisbel's room, and found a newspaper with Iska's picture on it, making her worry that she somehow knew about Iska. After Iska found out it was Sisbel, and not an assassin, she asked if he could accompany her to the sovereignty. After he realized that Sisbel was the girl that he rescued a year ago, she apologized for barging into his room in the middle of the night, and humbly asked her to move away from on top of her as it was making her horny. Sitting on his bed, Sisbel felt bad for not expressing her gratitude to Iska when he rescued her as she thought it might be a trap. But she gave him an arm bracelet to show her appreciation. She told Iska that the news of the Emperor's direct subordinate committing the crime of breaking out a mage was spread widely around the whole world, and she wanted to help him gain back his honor and status by making him come to sovereignty with her. After she falsely told him that she was a servant of the royal palace, he wondered why she wanted him to be with her as there were probably a lot of hot dudes with big swords there. But she wanted his Excalibur, and leaves the room after she expressed her emotions too much. After examining the room and failing to find anything useful, Rin had another plan in mind and offered a plan to allow Alice to go Alsamira, in hopes that Sisbel would talk to her sister as there would be no one around them. With the plan set in motion, Alice agreed to go to Alsamira, and wondered what her sister was up to. In the Empire, news of a purebred daughter of Queen Nebulize going to an independent nation had reached the Eight Apostles as well, and they planned to send over their secret creation to capture Sisbel, 
and commemorate this witch hunt. The next day, Iska and his squad were preparing barbecue for breakfast, but Iska seemed lost in thoughts and was on autopilot mode. Talking to Lord Mask about the potential traitors, Elatir told him that the ones who were trying to get in touch with the Empire were her sisters, and she wanted Mask to take care of them if they betrayed the sovereignty, as she might not be able to muster up the strength to do the right thing. Traveling to Al Samira on a bus, Alice and the other passengers were startled when the bus suddenly stopped, as the driver saw the footprints of a basilisk. However, Alice checked it out, and found out that the footprints didn't resemble that of a basilisk, and smelled machine oil around the area. Walking back to their hotel, Nene fixed the sticker on Miss Miss's crest as it was peeling off. Feeling the need to take care of the crest as soon as possible, Miss Miss thought that she needed to figure something out, but Jin didn't want her to overwork her pea brain, and told her to let them worry about it. Since Al Samira was an independent nation, it had products from both the Empire and the Nebulae's sovereignty, so Jin planned to find the same sticker Noro used to hide her crest as it was potent, and managed to fool everyone. Reaching the hotel, Iska told his squad to get inside, while he went to get currency exchanged for tomorrow. But in reality, he was looking for Sisbel. Out of nowhere, Sisbel managed to find him, and they went to a secluded place. Even though he changed his hotel, Sisbel managed to find him unbelievably fast and Iska wondered if it was related to her astral spirit. Opening the button of his shirt, Sisbel showed off her crest, and told Iska that her astral spirit has the ability to display the past as a video, and she used that to find out his location. Being her natural enemy, Iska wondered if it was okay for her to share this secret. But Sisbel wanted to show her sincerity by doing that, and told Iska the truth that she was the daughter of Queen Nebulize, and was a successor to the throne. Being a princess, Sisbel shouldn't be in need of Iska's help, but someone who was a descendant of the Founder was after Queen Nebulize's life, and if she died, both nations would go into an all-out war with each other, so Sisbel needs Iska's help to prevent that outcome since she can't trust anybody else. Knowing that he aims to stop this stupid war, Sisbel begged Iska to stop this eventual doomsday, and help her avoid the destruction of the two nations. Since he wanted to stop this 100-year-old conflict himself, Iska understood her desperation but he still couldn't go with her as he intended to initiate a peaceful negotiation among the nations, and fight for the cause that someone close to Sisbel also had. As they were going on with their conversation, Lord Mask arrived at their location with a bunch of mages behind him, and blamed her for being a traitor for connecting with someone from the Empire. In reality, it was the opposite as she was trying to save the nation from a traitor. Still, Mask doesn't care about that as he already recorded their conversation on a voice recorder and intended to use that to gain an upper hand on the election. Afraid of him, Sisbel ran away, and Mask ordered his mages to go after her, but Iska stepped in to stop them when suddenly, a f***ing mecha dragon fell from the sky in front of Sisbel. Seeing the unwanted guest, Mask immediately told his mages to capture her as soon as possible, and got into a fight with Iska when he tried to stop them. He tried to tell Mask that Sisbel has a good reason for talking to an Imperial soldier, but reasoning doesn't matter to Mask, as he can use this information to dethrone her from the upcoming election. After Iska's squad also arrived at the scene, Miss Miss recognized Mask as the person who kicked her into the vortex. The dragon detected astral energy around it, and included Miss Miss as a mage that needed to be eliminated, but its real orders were to capture the purebred mage, who was Sisbel. After eating the mask's mages with its tail, the dragon chased after Sisbel, and charged an energy beam. Remembering that Mask kicked his boss down into the vortex, Jin wanted to pummel him into the ground, and stopped him in his tracks. But Mask's mages launched a series of fireballs they barely managed to avoid. As the dragon was about to turn Sisbel into ash, Iska jumped in at the last second to slash its beam, and Nay Nay told him that they needed to take care of it before he sent the data back to Empire as it would show that Miss Miss was an astral mage. Seeing Iska protect her, she wondered why he was helping her, but even though he wasn't her ally, Iska didn't intend to let Mask get his hands on her. He begins slashing the dragon with his sword, but it doesn't seem to do any damage to it, so he ordered Nene to fire her missiles at the dragon that she engineered. Jin and Miss Miss were trying to get back to Iska to help him, but Mask doesn't intend to let them do that, and slashes his right arm. Using a backup gun from his right hand, Jin pierced Mask's heart, but the bullet was luckily blocked by the voice recorder he had in his pocket. To mimic the scenario of the Founder raising the whole empire, Mask poured oil around their location, and ordered his mages to set it on fire, but Miss Miss's wind magic put out their flames. Using the opportunity, Jin fired at Lord Mask, but it was blocked by the mask he wore, 
and he escaped from the area. Meanwhile, the dragon charged a beam made out of astral energy and obliterated the area in front of it. But Iska and Sisbel barely managed to dodge it. The dragon immediately started to charge another beam, and Nene fired her rockets at it, but a shield blocked them. With no other option left, Iska charged head-on towards the dragon dodging its attack, and Sisbel replayed a sandstorm that occurred at this location to use as a smokescreen. Utilizing the smoke screen, Iska managed to pierce the dragon's core and puts it on the ground, but the dragon captured Sisbel and converted into what looked like an astral spirit. With its newfound power, Iska was barely managing to defend himself from its attacks, but luckily, Alice reached the battlefield as well and saved Iska from the robot. She entrapped the robot into ice vines, while Iska jumped on the icicles to get close to the robot, but it managed to free itself at the last second. As light glowed from its stomach, Iska realized that the robot was charging up another attack, and told Alice to use his defensive blossom. As the blossom absorbed its blast, the robot started to speak in a language only known to astral spirits, and wrecked the surroundings. Even though she wanted to fight Iska, Alice proposed to join hands for now and they both chased after the robot while dodging its attacks. When they got near off, Iska and Alice combined their attacks to launch a Kamehameha towards the robot, and turned it into smithereens. With Sisbel saved from the robot, Alice immediately rushed to her, and she and Iska both thanked each other at the same time. Gaining back her consciousness, the first thing Sisbel asked was if they knew each other, but they both pretended to be strangers. Realizing that they were not acquainted, Sisbel openly expressed her love for Iska, and Alice immediately panicked hearing that. But she shouldn't have a problem with it, according to Sisbel, as she just acted like she doesn't know him. Having no desire to do a threesome right now, Iska returned to his squad who were happy to see him alive and well. The days passed, and Solinger was chilling around a forest to experience tranquility, but his peace was disturbed when the Emperor personally arrived to meet him. At the Sovereignty Palace, Queen Nebulae summoned Elatir since she was the one who leaked the information about Sisbel's whereabouts, and asked if she was the real Elatir, but she only answered with an evil grin on her face. With the fighting put to a halt for the time being, Alice and Iska meet up at the neutral city and she told him to pretend that she doesn't know her in front of other people. As their eyes crossed, she leaned in to kiss him. Set your heart ablaze, go beyond your limits, and watch the